And we're back on the midnight, still, but and now for some reason, we're going to Death Watch Tower at midnight because this seems like a beautiful idea. I mean, not like we have a choice. Ow! Yeah, this place doesn't look pretty. I mean, it looks very pretty art style wise, just not pretty to well, be in. Yeah, that's true. Surprisingly though, I remember this stage being harder when I, um, the, the thing is that even, even though I'm having, I'm going to have a little bit of trouble, um, through this stage, uh, I remember it being much harder. So what, what usually happens, um, of course, or rather what I'm used to right now, because again, I don't practice these stages. I go into them, you know, not blind. I, I did play this game a lot when I was a kid. But, like, oh, the only time I go, go and technically practice is if a lot of bullcrap happens too early. And so, that and that's it. And even then, that just if I notice that, then it's definitely not going to be where just like I retroactively decide that at the end of the stage. But you will see that there are certain areas, especially with how the zombies are placed, they're placed deceptively, um, deviously in this case. Um, there are many areas where I could just take a hit and keep going. But I can't because I'm on health finest for this run. So I have to deal with all these enemies coming at me in all their patterns and I specifically have to take care of the succubus because I know that one's going to be a pain later. And it's... Yeah, that's what I was about to say. And it just gets really hectic. Not to mention just like the stage is normal level hard, I guess, um, by my standard. So there are just some things you need to watch out for. Like, around this area is where, yeah, the where the Skull Mages come in. I know that's not their actual names, I forgot. But it's... The patterns of enemies just put together just make them so much harder in how they're placed. I really want to, like... It, it's like Castlevania design in a way. Where they're like... We don't want you to have a simple way out to, to progress. We want you to think about what you're doing. Yeah. So this part, I think, the placement of everything is just... Yeah, because right there, just you, you jump over the enemy, so they put a fireball right over the enemy. Yep. Um, and the succubus is there, which you're definitely going to have to kill. And luckily, she she did her other attack there, which is a throw bomb, throw bombs. But if she did the heart attack there, I would have died to that definitely because I wouldn't have been able to spin in time. Yeah, but you did die anyway. Well, yes, but just like I keep talking up these succubi, but not like showing the. That was me just being being frustrated and reckless, but not showing the attack that's apparently so bad. So here I just decide to try and probably just kill everything, even though it's going to take take a lot of time and probably lower my rank. Yeah. What have you been playing? Because I'm want to, I want to um segue into what I've been playing recently, which is Noita, which I don't know if I've talked about before. Um, uh, I mean, let's play is not sure. Don't think so. Yeah, but. What have you been playing recently? Okay, first of all, I want to know if anyone in the comments could tell me what's the best battle royale game for the Switch? Cause I, cause I see Realm Royale, I see Fortnite, I see Paladins, I see all and of I see friends, and I'm, and I'm thinking, which, which one do I get? Cause I don't, and I may, maybe I should stop. I should just look up what's the best battle royale or ranking. I, I, I list ranking them and see where the ones on the Switch come up in the rankings. I'd want to play Apex Legends, but that's not on the Switch. And so, so I'd like to know that if anyone could say that, but <laughs> that's very funny. Hmm. But yeah, Noita. Where once again, I've decided 
But I've decided. I've realized that an open world procedurally generated video game so, uh, open world procedurally generated sandbox game is once again a game that uh, has appealed to me. And who could have guessed? I mean, it took you a while to make that specific connection and you needed my help to do it. Yeah, I, I well, I, it, I, I realized I liked all things individual. Like, I know I like procedural games individually because I specifically search for procedural games on like itch.io. Especially after like no no Mario No Man's Sky No Man's Mario or whatever it's called the 2D Mario No Man's Sky um, crossover game and it's like this is amazing I need to play more games like this and so I just like to just search procedurally generated space in each each that I all the time that's why I started playing more fights and then there's Terraria and then. Yes, this. We're, we're, but, but the problem is that I thought the game would be too difficult. Like I wouldn't have fun. But ironically, it's the same thing, the same idea, the same thought I had for Terraria, where it's it's like that looks amazing, where he's flying around and shooting lasers and doing stuff that I could never dream of. Will I be able to get to that point and understand how to be that good? Probably not. And then I played it and then I got that good. And then the exact same thing happened with Terraria where I thought, this looks... Not Terraria, no it has. This looks too hard for me. And I was right. But it's still fun. Yeah, well, you do underestimate your, uh, um, your ability to do things, rightfully so in a lot of cases, because sometimes you, you have a tendency to forget basic stuff and then re realize it after realize it way too late well, the thing with Noita is that it's hard for everybody so that doesn't make me feel bad it just does ever even the best player at the game is terrible <laughs> that's, that, that's Look, amazing. I'm used to certain timing with Morgan but this time he's using the axe and the timing is slightly different yeah, but that, the back of the axe having a hitbox is very funny. It, it makes sense. Uh, but yeah, he, he, <laughs> well, he, he is We're going much, to be here a while. Like. No, we're not. He, oh, uh, okay, I do die like maybe one more time. But So I'm thinking that health fight did not go down. Of course it did. Oh, I, guess didn't, I didn't, didn't even get to start attack. slashing. Yeah, I realize. God damn it. Um, but yeah, the timing for him is different and I usually get in groove. And him knocking me out of it, it's just like really weird. So you see that I if if I didn't bound back down after learning, and it would be re really annoying. But luckily, I do have his weight um, thing memorized. Does he die? No, no. You think so, but no. He just comes back up and does does his ice shatter attack. You think the ice shatter would also hurt you? It does. I, I, just, I was just invincible at that point. Oh. And Yelta's a machine gun, which you Wait. should just use that the whole time. No, that's just it. That's actually a good thing, because if you see it coming, he's wide open from the top. I guess that's true. So yeah, my first B, not to, um an, an A in terms of time, but too many printies killed, and it seems like six minutes was probably... Um, the time where it was for it to be anyways, so, oh well. Well, right, I didn't even see what he, like, I saw that, but has he been even picking up food? Uh, sometimes no. Okay, sometimes no, okay. Yeah. In five hours, so something's about to happen. Well, it's the same thing with the chef bots. Um, Etna, Etna goes to, um, to tell us, well, now we have to fight the flavor sage. But the difference in this timeline is that the pretty is just like, we did everything and we're going to have to fight this this thing again. No, not again. This um, we Find this sage that will apparently destroy the ingredients if he thinks they're not worthy. Because I ain't having any of this. So instead, I'm showing off a little, um, the, a few things with the tenants here. 
who are all in Kurnato. Yes, but this is the this is the secret ninja guy who gives you the option to secretly run away for um from Edna. So we have this little plan thing while Edna thinks we're still on a mission, we totally just bail. Oh, so the game just ends. Well, you'll see what happens later. Um, but yeah, we we make this huge plan and we bail across the Never Grasslands. Right. I mean, I guess they're they're bad people, but as well, like, what do they expect? What do they expect? To well, the, they just leave and just live all their lives. Well, here's the thing. Remember that Etna in particular is a really bad boss. Um. So, like, they could find work under another, um, demon and, like, could actually be marginally more okay. Yeah, I'm thinking, yeah, they should explore just stuff like that, like a faction of... Because, is she, like, specifically the ruler of the Prince? No, she's not, she's, she's not specifically the ruler of the Prince, she just has a huge Prince squad compared to everybody else. Yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking they should explore just other other pruning factions. I mean, they never got the upper even in the last. I forget if it was this timeline or not. The the gourmet ogre tries to hire the pruning after realizing that they they're really reliable. Um, but uh, he said once they mention who their normal boss is, he immediately backs down and is like, "Yeah, we understand." But turns out this was a trap. The ninja, if you get his secret file, is actually a spy for Etna. And she sends legendary Pringer Z robots, which are known in which are known to again be one of the most powerful things in existence. To go fry them all. So that doesn't but it seems excessive. Yeah, but she does that as punishment for daring to defy her in this way. So does that mean they all lose their money? We we don't know. Remember, I'm. It seems totally unfair if they do, but um, just like we we actually don't know. But oh, okay. but yeah, that's how your lives end, and that's how you start a new timeline um, prematurely if you're done with whatever you need to do. Don't need to go through the final boss sections and whatever anymore. So this is a fourth timeline? Yes. Okay. So this is specifically a fourth timeline triggered by doing this? Yes. What once you once you do the whole escape thing, um uh, you can play a new oh, game. So every time you play the game it's just a different timeline? Yeah. I mean technically you could theoretically go through the stages in the same way, but why would you do that? Especially when you have the dimensional oh, so. person before, where you can revisit stages in a different dimension normally. Oh, so the timelines come by just the order you do the stages. Yeah, in? that's why. It, oh, so that's why technically you don't. Um, it doesn't matter. Um, once you finish the main six stages, because the rest, because the the other stages play out the same way. What other stages? They're only so I don't know. No, understand. remember we we fight the giant chef robot, then we go across the black desert, then we go and 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 um through the this first and second part of Sir Sweet's castle. Those are the last few yes. levels. They don't change yeah. no matter what you do. Right. But the main six stages are based off of the time that you decide to do them. So just like since we're do we're doing um since since we're in the morning now and I did the midnight stage before I just I I decided to do Death's Watchtower again and this is the morning version of it and we'll face different bosses and see different conversations. So do they have a timeline for every single order or is it just like? Certain the, the placement of certain stages. The placement of the placement of certain stages. It's not like if you like say did morning and day, and in two particular stages, and then did morning in one different stage, and then day in that other stage. Then the then the other stage would be different. Um, it's that they all have set events based off of the time that you, the time that you visit them. 
Right. So does the timeline really just is the timeline really just based on like the final stage then? Like the as the story part, like for how the game ends. Yeah. yeah. So there's like six endings and then the Asagi? Usagi? Asagi. Asagi ending. The, well, technically there's only one ending. Uh, I mean, well, technically there are only two endings. The Asagi ending and the normal ending because as I said, the last stuff doesn't change. Right, but the game just ended. When everyone died. Yeah. So that's the third ending. I guess you can count that, sure. I, I, I mean, yes, that's, I mean, yes, you are correct, I just, it just doesn't register as an ending in my mind. I always just, I always just, um, considered it, uh, I, I never really thought of it in that way, even though it is. It's just like, okay, I'm done, I'm done with this, the new six stages here, I'll just reset to this. Alright. But yeah, in, in the morning we face Bas Basil and Churvel. Bone Dragons, um, who are known for their stand-up routine, where just like they banter with each other. That's just a human skull. Yeah, he spits out human skulls when it- the, the thing is about both of them is that- But the human robot skull. <laughs> when you take- when you take either one of them down, their heads stay and continue attacking you. Interesting. Wait. That's a key mechanic. Yep. Um, uh, but honestly, even though ba Basil is the most annoying one, so always take him down first. I was about to say that's something that will happen in Noita. Which it is. But yeah. So what do you say? Basil is the one that does what first? No. Um, Basil is just the most annoying one. So I take him out first. Oh, so that reminds me of Terraria, where you're fighting the boss called the Twins, which are two two robot eyes, and they, you kind of... They both have a second stage. That's twice, at least twice as annoying as the first stage, and they're very, very hard, in my opinion. And so the, the the play is you don't kill one because then it will become very hard. So you have to bring both of them down at the same time. No, yeah, you have to completely kill one before you. So I guess it's the opposite then. You you have to completely destroy one and then do the other one because if you make both of them get to their low health. Second stage, it just becomes ridiculous, and so you, you're, you're trying to avoid hitting one of the one of the. Well, this is well, this is a predicament. Yeah, as I was about to say, you seemed kind of trapped under there. Well, even though I'm not explicitly Lucky Doll hunting in these runs, um, when a Lucky Doll shows up, it's better to get it out of the way. Yeah. So yeah, I guess it was the opposite. Even though it is also a robot animal. Well, not, an eye is not really an animal. But a robot do a boss. I mean, they're not robots. They're not robots? I said bone dragons. Did you miss the part where I yeah, they, specifically said bone dragons? It looks like robots. I heard bone dragons, but they still look like... They, so is that just a regular human skill? How does a robot human skill? I just thought you were joking. Oh. They just... That's yeah, they are both just normal bone dragons. They just look really cool. Yeah, well, I guess they do. So, yeah, it's less like Terraria. But it's still cool. Yeah, um, even though I'd say in terms of interesting things about how bosses work, Pretty 2 definitely... Um, well, I won't say knocks this one out of the water, but more rather... Just like introduces a lot more um, interesting elements to the boss fights, especially since in Pretty Two um, they make it so that certain certain bosses are immune 
to normal confrontational attacks just because of either where they are in the battlefield or just what they are. And so you have um, the character Flan actually arranges special pretty cannons that you can activate to weaken the boss. Do you have the same moveset? That does not matter. Yeah, it did, and I'm gonna kill myself so I can get so I can get back because I didn't know where where exactly it was um, because I you usually don't go under that place in the first in the first place. So. Do you have 22? Do you have the same moveset in 22? Yes, there are some added bonuses to what you do, um, but it's the same moveset, same uh, and same movement restrictions. How do you know to come down here? That seems like it's weird. Well, you hear the noise. They always make a noise. Oh, okay. You always, they always make a noise when when they come up, and so you just the the area in which it triggers for them to make the noise isn't very large. So you just have to explore around that vertical space. Okay. Also. Something of a specific note is that when there are certain, well, differences with how certain bosses operate, you'd think yeah. the, the Prinnies would just take up some of that money Let's and pay off their debt and leave. Yeah. I guess stealing would probably make them lose more money. Yeah, I, want, I, there, I wonder about like ill-gotten gains and um, from crimes done normally. It does seem like that would just be the easiest option, so obviously there must be something explained in a game that I haven't played yet um, about it. And considering I haven't played Disgaea's 3, 3 to 5, including D2, despite me loving the, the franchise, well technically I did a demo of 5 where I got to chapter 3, but like... Yeah, I was about to say, I'm pretty sure you played so much. Yeah, I, I got it. Did you, do you like it? Yeah. I hate the I hate the main character. I think he's a boring piece of stale bread, which is very off-brand for Disgaea. But everything else, I'm pretty I'm liking it so far. Um, but yeah, despite just like despite my love of Disgaea, I haven't played four. I haven't played through four of the mainline games, and six is about to come out. So it's just like. That, that was me with Legend of Zelda, where for the longest, or like, 3D, well I guess that's a bit, well no, it's, it's not different. I just didn't get opportunities to buy the games. I mean, in this I case, get them through other I mean, in this case, at least really. 4 and 5 are within my reach for consoles I have. I just don't, still can't have 3. Three. What's that for? PS3 and Vita. Hmm, oh, stinks. I mean, that was probably go to PC or Switch one day. Yeah, one day. I always liked the setup Which of 3, me? so it's always disappointed that 3 always seemed to be getting f forgotten. I need, unfortunately, I need to get um, the 30th, 35th anniversary Mario triple game game, whatever that game's called. Super Mario 35, that's not right. Because the reversed the, the reversed camera for Sunshine is just impossible. I tried to play it and I fi I literally cannot play that game. Okay. So unfortunately, Nintendo got me. <laughs> camera controls, they got me. I wasn't gonna support it, but that's fine. I mean, are you sure that in in some cases that it's, that there is no I, nothing to change? I it? can't find any mod or any. Maybe I'm just not looking. Or good. maybe you're not. I maybe can't have you tried the options menu? I, I want yes. I don't know why you're making me second guess this. No, it's like because because sure I'm because a lot of times the most basic answer. Just like it's the easiest one to just like the no well m m sunshine I don't want to draw this out too too much longer well I guess it doesn't matter but sunshine famously has reversed controls and I'm sure it wouldn't be famous if there was an option to change it okay 